how to use an Arduino, in this case a Pro Micro or an Uno, as an Arduino ISP programmer to program sketches or bootloaders or to read and write fuses into other Arduinos or individual Atmel chips. Over at the Arduino page for using Arduino as an in-system programmer to program sketches or bootloaders, they have all kinds of info. You can go check out what they have. They describe how to wire it up, set it up in the IDE and utilize it in various cases. They talk about the pinouts. And for the stuff I'm doing today, everything is 5 volts. I'm using 5 volt boards to do the programming and I'm using 5 volt boards as my target device. They talk about how to handle 5 volt and 3.3 volt devices and one way is to just run everything at 3.3 volts. The Mega 328P on the Arduino Uno can run down to 2.7 volts and the signals can also be level shifted in between the boards. Today we're only looking at 5 volt to 5 volt. They show various wiring diagrams so in the end all that's needed we have the SPI pins as well as an output on the board that's going to be the programmer and that output will control reset on the target and also 5 volts and ground will be common between the two. So whatever boards the programmer, the SPI pins are connected one to one. The programmer's output that's controlling reset goes to the reset input on the target. 5 volts and ground are just connected directly. So the target's being powered by the same 5 volts as the programmer. The programmer will be plugged into USB. The target will not. And then the host system that's doing the programming will just treat this as a programmer and this as the actual UNO that you're trying to program. There's talk about sometimes needing to put a 10 microfarad capacitor with the positive to reset and the negative to ground. And that would be done after the board that you're using as a programmer has been programmed itself as a programmer. In other words, you need this programmer board to function normally, download the Arduino ISP sketch to turn it into a programmer, then if this electrolytic capacitor is needed, you would put it in circuit. And this is only needed on boards where there's an extra USB interface between the main microcontroller and the computer. So if it's a board that only really has one chip on it, and that chip happens to handle USB as well as act as the main processor, this circuit is not needed. Here's the UNO Rev3 schematic, where you have the main chip, the 328P, but an extra chip as a USB interface. In this case, the DTR from USB is tied into the main reset. So here's the reset on the actual headers of the UNO and it's going directly to the reset pin on the processor. The reset pin also is pulled up because it's an active low and reset can also be controlled by DTR when the computer is going to do some programming. This reset pin will be toggled a couple of times through this capacitor and normally that's what you want to do when you're trying to program because you want to get into the bootloader but if this board is acting as a programmer, you don't want it to be resetting when you're trying to do programming through this board out to another. So you throw a 10 micro from here to ground by using the header. And when this USB interface tries to toggle this, the 10 microfarad keeps this reset high and prevents this from going into reset and then everything behaves normal. This board acts as a programmer. Here's scope traces I took with and without the 10 microfarad capacitor on reset. So the yellow trace on the top is the DTR and the bottom blue trace is the actual reset pin. So I'm probing right here on the DTR from USB and the other side directly on the reset pin. Without the capacitor, normal operation, reset is normally held high and it goes low to trigger a reset. So when the USB circuit uses the DTR to try to bring reset low, without this extra capacitor, the reset pin actually does go low and the Arduino that's directly plugged into the computer will have its reset pin affected. With a 10 microfarad, when the host tries to trigger the reset, the reset on the main programming Arduino stays high. So the sketch in the main programmer Arduino stays running and just waits for further instruction from the host. 
Here's the setups I'm using. First I'll use an UNO as a programmer and then another UNO as a target that I'm going to program. And this is how it's hooked up. This programmer is going to be plugged into the computer's USB. This one is not. This one gets its 5 volts and ground from the main one. Once this has been programmed with the Arduino ISP sketch, I will install the 10 micro capacitor to keep this one from being reset when it's trying to program this one. So these three SPI pins are connected one to one between the two boards, and then this digital 10 acts as a control to reset the target. I'm also using a Pro Micro as a programmer. All I do is I program the exact same Arduino ISP sketch, no changes, and this is all five volts. So I take five volts and ground, power the target. Again, the three SPI pins are going one to one and the output that controls reset goes directly to the reset of the target. We have the Arduino ISP sketch downloaded into the UNO. That's available under examples Arduino ISP. And the Arduino USB serial port is this right here in my case. So I also have a terminal window open here. I have the ATmega8515L and the ATtiny26L. So on each of these chips on the breadboard, I have the power and ground pins with a 100 nano decoupling capacitor on each. And then I have the SPI and the reset pins hooked up. So one by one, those will go to those programming pins on the UNO. When you upload a sketch from Arduino and it compiles it, it uses AVR Dude to actually communicate with the programmer to program the target. So we can do that ourselves outside of the Arduino environment. For example, right here I have a command line to just go in and read the low and high fuses out of an ATtiny26 device using this Arduino programmer as an AVR ISP programmer. And I'm using AVR Dude stored on this USB flash drive where I put AVR Dude as well as the configuration file for convenience and I'm using my serial port that represents the Arduino that's plugged in right now. And baud rate 19.2k. So when I use this command it will go talk to this programmer on this serial port at this speed talking to this chip to read the fuses and AVR Dude is what's doing it. So let's see what happens. So it read the signature successfully and it identified probably a T26. I guess that means tiny 26. The high fuse is F7, low fuse is E1. So we were able to use the Arduino as a programmer to talk to the AT tiny 26. Lady Ada has some info about AVR Dude, including a bunch of info on those command line options, what they mean, valid parameters you can use, what chips are recognized by AVR Dude if you want to program them or read them, some info on how to install AVR Dude if you don't already have it. But if you've already got Arduino IDE installed, AVR Dude should be in there. And according to this thread, in the Arduino IDE, you can go into preferences and turn on verbose output and upload a sketch and see where the Arduino accesses AVR Dude. Now I've unplugged the ATtiny26 and I've plugged in the 8515. So now back at my command prompt, I have a similar command. This time I'm using ATmega8515 and I'm reading the low and high fuses. And it read the signature and says it's probably a Mega8515, that's correct. And again, it reads the low and high fuses. So it's able to communicate with that device as well. So I want to use the blue UNO to program the red UNO. So in the tools menu, my target board is UNO, and that's the red board it's referring to. The port here is the UNO that I'm using as a programmer, and that's the one that's plugged into USB. And the programmer is Arduino as ISP, again referring to the blue board. So the blink sketch is loaded and configured for pin 2. So now, instead of sketch and upload, I say upload using programmer. Says uploading, lights are happening, and the sketch is in. Now the 
LED on the target device is showing that we have a sketch in there. Now that I know I can program a sketch using one Arduino as a programmer, I'm going to put a bootloader into the target board and then see if I can confirm the bootloader is working. Making sure everything is still configured correctly, the target red board is an Uno. I'm using an Arduino as a programmer on this USB port. So if I just say burn bootloader, it should put the Uno bootloader in the red Uno. It says it's burning bootloader and it may take a minute. Lights are blinking. It says done burning bootloader. Now it's plugged into USB on its own and it's the only Uno plugged in. So now I have to set the port to this new Uno and we're just going to use the Arduino IDE in regular configuration. So I change the programmer back to what it usually is. Now everything is good. It's Uno on that port, regular programmer. And I have the blink sketch. I made it blink quickly now. So I will just upload this the regular way with the upload command. It says uploading and it's communicating and now it's blinking. So it looks like there was success using one Uno to program either a sketch or a bootloader in another Uno. Now I have an Arduino Pro Micro as an in-system programmer hooked up to program the ATtiny26L. And if it can do this, presumably it can program all the other configurations because it's also a 5 volt Arduino. So the SPI and reset are coming over and jumping over to the chip. 5 volts and ground coming off of the Pro Micro are going into the rail to power the chip. In order to get the Pro Micro set up to be used in the Arduino environment, I followed the instructions here at SparkFun to install the board support and then a bunch of new boards will show up and we're looking for SparkFun Pro Micro. Once board support is installed, I choose SparkFun Pro Micro and this one's the 5 volt 16 megahertz version and this is the serial port that showed up. So using regular Arduino IDE programming methods, again without making any changes to this Arduino ISP programmer sketch, I just put this in the Pro Micro using the regular upload command. Lights are blinking, it's uploading and it's done. If I come back over to my terminal, I tell it the new serial port for this programmer. It went in, read the signature, tiny26. It read the low and high fuses. And now using the Pro Micro hooked up with the SPI and the reset and five volts and ground over to an Arduino Uno, I'm using AVR dude at the command prompt and I'm just going to look for the ATmega328P that's on the Uno and I'm going to read the low and high fuses just to see that I can communicate with it. And it found the signature saying it's probably the Mega328P and it read the low and high fuses. So it looks like the Pro Micro will work just as well as the Uno with the exact same Arduino ISP sketch, no modifications. This gives a lot of flexibility now, both if we want to use chips on breadboards or if we have a corrupted bootloader and we need to refresh an Arduino and we don't happen to have a standalone Atmel AVR programmer. Always good to have tools in the toolbox.